Nate Swain takes great pleasure in committing random acts of guerrilla art. I like to ask for forgiveness instead of for permission. His projects run from the monumental to the miniature, and when a 10-year-old came up with the idea for 3D crosswalks in Medford... We hope this can be an extra reminder, like, you have to stop. Swain was a natural choice to bring the concept to life. Today, he and a couple of friends have set up shop under the Zakem Bridge, making yet more art hidden in plain sight. This space is hidden. People driving over the Zakem Bridge have no idea about this space under here. And it's beautiful, it's huge and grand. Swain's Zen Garden is planted in front of his 150-foot mural, neither artwork authorized by city or state. It kept growing and growing, and now it's 150 feet long and 15 feet tall. But for Swain, hiding in plain sight doesn't just describe his art, it defines a lifestyle. In terms of a living space, like be hidden in plain sight, it's, it's an awesome concept. To that end, Nate Swain bought himself an anonymous looking shuttle bus, slapped on some commercial plates, and now lives rent free in Boston. I don't pay rent, no. Nope. But I do pay insurance and I pay taxes. Swain has asked us, um, <clears throat> understandably, not to show the 33 passenger shuttle bus in its entirety, but he's happy to take us on a tour of the interior, which he has started to renovate. There's a Murphy bed, it's a Tempur Pedic mattress a sink, even a washer dryer. Today, Swain is camped out near Faneuil Hall. Tomorrow, who knows, maybe South Boston. A life spent rent-free, hiding in plain sight. It is possible. It's sometimes like, how did I figure this out? Why didn't I figure this out sooner? <laughs> Now, Chronicle viewers of a certain age may well remember this once familiar sound with fondness. Time to dial it back. Don't get me wrong. These things are an absolute miracle. That cell phone in your pocket is literally millions of times more powerful than the computers used to send astronauts to the moon. But has something been sacrificed? Beneath all those digits and speed dials lies a ghostly lost telephone Hi. civilization where phone numbers had names and personalities. Once learned, never lost. Absolutely, Decatur 28315. Cypress 65764. Empire 14779. Until the late 60s, all phone exchanges oh. had names, many specifically tailored to their location. Quincy had Granite 1, East Boston, Logan 7, and a farm stand in Literary Concord still boasts its old Emerson 9 number. Most of those exchanges still work. Their character and color hidden in plain sight, just beneath the surface of today's bland series of digits. Pennsylvania 6, 5, it's poetry, it just flowed right out and I'll never forget it. When it comes to telephones, there is only one man to call. Howard Davis, known for his colorful means of conveyance. The phone car is still running. Davis laments the loss of the old exchange names you gave your whole town or your whole section of the, of the city some personality. Beachwood, four, five, seven, eight, nine. The old alphanumeric phone numbers had such a natural rhythm, turning them into music was a snap. How many cookies did Andrew eat? Andrew ate 8,000. Music so memorable, Adams and Sweat Rug Cleaning Company still uses its old catchphrase, 75 years after it first appeared. Yes, it's on our website, it's on our trucks, so it, it's well known. It's been ingrained in people's brains since the 1940s. Aaron Sokolov owns Superior Rug Cleaning Company, which bought up Adams and Sweat a number of years ago, but this savvy businessman knew better than to mess with that jingle with the old South Boston Exchange. Andrew 88,000. They just remember it, they sing it, uh, how many cookies did Andrew eat? Andrew ate 8,000. And then boom, they, they call the number and they, you are still in business. Can you pick up my rug? Yes, we can. Eight, eight, Andrew ate 8,000. A true classic. <laughs> how did I do, okay? 
a fist bump for sure. The Andrew 88,000 uh, radio jingle has not run for years, but as you saw, the lyrics are on the side of the truck, nice. and the drivers actually get serenaded by bystanders sometimes when they're on their rounds. Oh my God, it's going to be in my head yeah. now. All right, and back to Nate Swain and his shuttle bus. The idea came about when he realized how much money he was spending in rent over mm. 20 years in the North End, roughly $200,000. He was horrified, and he said there has to be a better way. So he's living in the big old van. <laughs> All right, coming up.